Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be looking at how the DP32 can be set up. For more details on this, please visit, visit the website shown on the screen. So this is the Chipkit DP32. It has a PIC32 250F128 on, uh, on, on board. And also you'll need a Chipkit programmer called the PGM. And those are both available online from Digilint and a number of other vendors. Inside of the box for the PGM there is a right angle 6 pin header and you will need that to connect to the Chipkit DP32 board. This is the header right here. You plug it into the 6 pin connector with the staggered zigzag holes like this. You can optionally solder this in, which is what I prefer to do. And you plug it in so that the triangle on the chip kit header, the white triangle on the black background, lines up with pin 1. You'll see pin 1 labeled as soon as the focus comes in. There we go. Pin 1 is labeled with a little 1 on the top gold colored pin and the triangle should be pointing very, very close to it. If you do it the other way, you might break your board, so please don't do that. Hold the chip kit programmer carefully and plug in the mini USB cable to it. Make sure that you hold the chip kit programmer and not the board, otherwise you might break the pins. Take the micro USB cable and connect it to the micro USB port on the chip kit board and this will provide power to your board. But before you go any further, there's one more step that has to be followed. One of the jumpers, the dark blue pieces of rectangular plastic on the chip kit DP32 needs to be changed and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So those are the two USB uh, connectors for the computer and you'll be plugging these into the computer in order to provide power and to provide a functionality for programming the chip kit board. So you simply connect both of those USB cables into your computer like this. Now we have to make a change to the the uh, the jumper right there. So this blue jumper has to be placed in that particular position right there. If you don't see that very clearly, please go to the web page shown on the screen. Once that you've made the change to the DP uh, 35, or sorry, DP 32 um, board, what you have to do now is plug in the micro USB cable and you'll get power applied to your board. Okay, here we go. We're going to be trying to program oops, the Chipkit DP32 board and you can see I have the programmer from Chipkit uh, attached to it as well. I've loaded up my Mac, I'm now going to load up the VirtualBox virtual machine. I'm going to start Windows. Okay, so now um, Windows has loaded up in the VirtualBox virtual machine. I'm going to go up to Devices at the top here. Select USB Devices.
I unplugged and plugged back in the Digilent Chipkit programmer and now it appears as a valid USB device in the VirtualBox virtual machine. So now I can load up MPLAB X and I'll create a very simple program for the Chipkit DP32 that it will be programmed using the Chipkit programmer. While we're waiting for MPLAB X to load up, I will point out once again that the jumper right here, jumper setting JP7, has been set to allow uh, for USB powered uh, operation on this. I'm going to go to File. on file again. Oh, here we go. So, new project. Microchip embedded. Standalone project. Next. I want to choose the 32-bit processors and on this board right here, if you take a look closely, you'll see that it says it is a PIC32 MX250 F 128 B. So I've selected the right chip and now I have to select this right here, the programmer. And that programmer is found as a licensed debugger right here. I choose XC32 as a compiler. I'm going to say that this is my first DP32 project. That's my project name. So we're ready with the project here. We're going to right click on source files. We're going to say, oops, cancel that. We're going to say uh, new other C. C main file. We use the default name. Now we have the template file for the C program. I'm going to include the main hardware header file called xc.h at the top. I'm going to insert a breakpoint right there. I'm going to compile. And we can see in the output window down here that the compiler was successful. Now I'm going to click on the debug main project button right here and that will load a debuggable version of the code onto the chipkit board. So now we see that the license debugger 
in the bottom window has been initialized. The target the target's been detected. MPLAB X is giving us a warning that uh, currently the watchdog timer enable is on and this is typically a good thing in a regular program but in the case of a program like this we don't want it to be on and, Ma and MPLAB X knows that. It's asking to turn it off by itself and we're going to say yes. We're now programming the board and if you take a look here you look here, we can see that uh, as I lifted it, it failed to program. We're going to try this again. I've restarted the debugging. I'll try not to move the board this time. The program is now running, and as you can see from the green arrow right beside the word return, the program has now halted, and we can debug. So we can see that the board itself is working, it is interacting with MPLAB X, everything's hunky-dory. And that's it for the first demo using the Chipkit DP32 board and the Chipkit programmer on a virtual machine running Windows and MPLAB X.